What level of tech should you use for your virtual events? The thing is, virtual events can be done very simply and easily, or very high tech and complex. Let's face it, each have their pros and cons. So I'm gonna walk you through three different types of tech setups for virtual events, and also give you four questions to ask yourself to help you decide which type is right for you. Of course, over the last couple of years with the world shutting down, virtual events became a much bigger, popular thing. But now that the world is opening up and physical events are coming back, the question is, are virtual events dead? He's dead. Absolutely not. And in fact, there's a lot about a virtual event that can be more powerful than an in-person event if, and only if, you focus on the experience for the viewer. In other words, a boring eight hour a day, multi-day event is just not gonna give you results. And in fact, our own virtual event, Expand Your Reach, proved that the virtual experience can be incredibly engaging and incredibly awesome. Let's talk tech. So I'm gonna give you three tech setups to consider for your own virtual event. And before I get to that, I want you to keep in mind these four questions that will help you decide. Question one, are there multiple hosts and or guest speakers? And with this, you have to ask yourself, are they all coming in remotely from different locations or are they all in the same physical space? And then you also have to ask yourself, are they all coming in at the beginning of the event? You can do one tech check for all guests and speakers, or are they gonna be staggered throughout different hours, different days? In that case, you might actually have to consider having a separate green room with an extra producer running that green room for tech checks before those speakers jump up onto the main stage. Question number two, how many people do you have available to run the tech? The thing is, you could do it all yourself and be the host of the event, run the content, and also run production. It is possible, however, depending on the importance of the event, I would not actually recommend it. Separating out host duties and producer duties will give you much better results. Number three, what do you want the end experience for the attendees to be like? And what about your experience as the host? How risk tolerant are you? The lower the tech setup, the more issues you probably will have with the tech. I know, counterintuitive. And the fourth question is how much interactivity from the attendees do you want? This is probably one of the most important questions to ask. Do you want it to be a one-way experience where you're delivering the content, viewers can comment in the chat room? Or do you want them to be able to show up on the main stage, ask questions with their video and audio coming into the production, maybe share big takeaways? Do you wanna have overlays and extra umph like we did with Expand Your Reach where people could celebrate, they could give feedback in a visual way? So with these questions in mind, let's talk about the three setups. Number one, it's the simplest and easiest. This is using a browser-based streaming platform like StreamYard or Restream Studio or Wave Studio. Most of them have a feature that allows for remote production. So you as a viewer show up, deliver the content, focus on making it an engaging experience, and then somebody else logs in, switches cameras, throws up graphics, et cetera, et cetera. And if you have multiple guests or hosts, they can easily come in with just a simple link into the production, and then you can throw them up on main stage as you're ready. Now, this won't be the highest quality production you could ever do, but here are some things to make it better. Tech checks with each person speaking at the event prior to the event and not just hoping they show up sounding and looking okay. Have them frame themselves correctly. This, not this. At this level, you cannot make adjustments to their framing like you can in downloadable software. So it's really important to have them do it on their end. Preparation and checklists and even a tech rehearsal before the event can really reduce a lot of the problems that I see at this level of production. The second type of event is Zoom. Doing your event through Zoom adds a layer of interactivity that can be extremely beneficial for your event. Now, when using Zoom, there are a lot of different scenarios and ways you can accomplish this, which is a more complicated conversation for another time. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. Everyone, you 
the host, the producer, and the attendees all come into Zoom for the event. Now, this of course limits the number of attendees you can have doing it this way. You produce all of the graphics and the camera switches in Zoom or vMix software, and then you send that into Zoom as a virtual camera. That way the attendees are seeing the professional production. Now, Zoom is known for its low quality, right? And people don't seem to remember this when they're trying to produce a professional looking virtual event inside of Zoom. You're trying to throw up slides, you have the, your professional camera, you want it to look good and it looks like that's because Zoom offers low resolution natively, but there are three things you can do. You can send Zoom a support ticket and request a higher resolution. If you're on the pro account, you can get 720p. If you're on business or enterprise, you can get up to 1080p. Make it so. Zoom ISO is a page service that gives you 1080. Beyond the high quality, it also allows you to separate and extract the main feed from each individual attendee, which gives you a lot of customization options and higher tech functionality, which is what we use in our type three setup that we do. Or you could buy a portal, bring that in as a guest, and guess what? It automatically upgrades you to 1080. Some tips to make this level of production better, set it up so that everyone comes into Zoom muted. Encourage people to turn on their cameras because it adds to the interactivity and it actually makes the speakers more engaged. Spend some time really understanding why things work and what works to increase engagement and with the flow of content because that is where you're gonna get the biggest results. I've said it over and over, but expand your reach. Our own virtual event was incredibly engaging. Everybody said so. Well, here's the thing. The strategy that we implemented actually came from my friends Barry and Blue, and they teach how to actually do virtual events really, really well. I went to their event last year, the virtual event on virtual events, took a lot of their strategies, added on top of that our own magic, like I always tell you to do. And guess what? This event is actually coming up again on April 26th. The link is in the description and I highly, 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 highly recommend that you attend it yourself. Even if you don't follow every single strategy, knowing what works and what doesn't and how to do it actually will make the biggest difference for you. And knowing is half the battle. Had I not attended the virtual event on virtual events last year, then our own Expand Your Reach event would not have been as successful. The third type of event is the high-tech, multiple computer, multiple producer setup. I don't know a better name for it, but it is what we do in our own events and for our production company. The reason that we go so high-tech is because it adds more stability, more redundancy, a simpler and smoother production in the end result, more engagement, and overall just a more successful event. This can look a number of different ways, but here's how it usually looks for us. Producer A handles the live broadcast, camera switching, showing and hiding overlays, et cetera, et cetera. Producer B handles the Zoom ISO sources, essentially making sure that producer A has access to the right speakers at the right time so that they can focus on the live production itself. If you have more than five speakers at a time or you have a complex run of show, this part is essential. And there's a video linked to it in the description that actually has more details. Depending on the answers to the questions that you ask yourself at the beginning of this video, then you might also have a green room with tech check for speakers and another person Person is running that. And then of course you also have to consider moderators to make sure everything's going smoothly in chat rooms and also communication to the host about what's going wrong or what needs to be fixed. Obviously this option is way more complex and definitely a higher cost. If your production, if your virtual event is actually making you money, then it can be worth it. And of course at this level, it often makes more sense to hire it done rather than you try and reinvent the wheel, try and struggle through all of the tech problems and also run your event, you should be focused on the content itself. And if you're interested, we do have information in the description about our remote production services. Remember, you have to be ultra clear on the end goal that you're trying to achieve. And a big part of that is what level of interactivity do you want for your audience? Because that one thing will determine a lot of the other answers, like what tech setup do you need? This video goes way deeper in terms of that level three tech setup and takes you behind the scenes in an event that we ran. So go check that out and I will see you there.